So the first two episodes of X-Men 97 have premiered, and I wanted to give my general thoughts on them, as well as my first impression of the show overall. It promised to be a continuation of the original X-Men animated series. Admittedly, my expectations weren't very high going into it. The showrunner Bo DeMeo was fired just before the release of the show, which was concerning to say the least. There's some conflicting rumors about what happened. Some was saying he was fired because he produces adult content for OF. But as of this recording, nothing's been confirmed. Either way, I had my hesitations. But after watching the two episodes, I found myself pleasantly surprised. Especially after coming off of something like Masters of the Universe Revolution, it really did feel like this was picking up where the previous show left off. And much of the show was pulling directly from the comics. And as a fan, that was really cool to see. You can tell that the writing staff actually cared about the X-Men animated series and X-Men overall, which is really cool because more often than not, these sequels and reboots just end up being a real disappointment. Considering the fact that it is meant to be a season 6 of the X-Men animated series and it pulls so heavily from comics, I'm not sure how much people who aren't familiar with X-Men will be able to get out of this. It doesn't really go out of its way to introduce the characters. During the end credits, there is a character select of sorts that briefly goes over the powers of some of the cast, but it's not a lot of substance. And it does keep that iconic intro, where it shows off the cast and their powers, which is still epic all these years later. But the point is, if you don't know X-Men, I would probably recommend starting with a different show instead of this one, whether it's the original animated series from the 90s, or one of the other cartoons like Evolution, which I also really enjoyed. But X-Men 97 was a real treat for a longtime fan like me. I finally get to enjoy something! So that's nice. So X-Men 97 picks up a year after Charles Xavier's death. Scott and Jean are married and expecting Cable, and Scott is currently leading the X-Men. Cable's already appeared in the animated series, since he's a time traveler, so it'll be interesting to see how they tie that together. But Jean says that she wants to leave the X-Men so they can focus on raising their baby, which upsets the others, especially Wolverine. But then Magneto unexpectedly shows up, because it turns out Charles left his entire estate to him, which is where most of the main drama comes from from. So we get the last will and testament of Charles Xavier, and also the trial of Magneto, which also ended up leading into life death, which is a story where Storm loses her powers. I wasn't expecting to see that, but I'm very intrigued. There were a bunch of other cool references and nods. Being able to pick out the Easter eggs was really fun. It does look like they're setting up a love triangle between Rogue, Gambit, and Magneto, because Magneto and Rogue actually have a history in the comics. Personally, I don't ship it, but Magneto is also immune to Rogue's powers, so he's one of the few people that she can actually connect with. I can't help but feel like him being immune to her powers is a little forced, even in the comics. But that's just my opinion. I'm sure there are people who do like this dynamic. And they're totally entitled to that opinion. But back to the show. Now the X-Men have to deal with the loss of Professor X, being led by Magneto of all people, Jean and Scott wanting to do their own thing, people actively wanting the destruction of their very existence, trying to convince Sunspot to join them, and eventually losing Storm. It's very compelling, and there are a lot of great character moments. The only real issues I had with X-Men 97 were just issues that I have with the X-Men overall. The X-Men were originally created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and they came up with the idea for mutants so that way they wouldn't have to constantly make up new backstories for each character. That way they could just say that they were all mutants and move on with the story. But as the years went by, they decided to use them as an allegory for social issues, and the comic became pretty progressive. In most X-Men media, they go on about how humans are terrified of mutants, to the point where they go to terrible lengths, like creating the Sentinels to hunt them down and kill them, which makes for some very dramatic and poignant stories. But if I'm totally honest, I don't think mutants are a great allegory. There's a difference between not liking someone for superficial reasons like the way they look, and being wary of people who could easily tear through armies single-handedly. Even in the show, Jean goes into labor, and on the way to the hospital, she accidentally tears the roof of the car off, because she temporarily lost control of her powers, and it goes flying into the street. Also, throughout X-Men media, they constantly reiterate that there's nothing wrong with mutants and they shouldn't have to be cured. But I think it's really more of an individual thing, and the cure definitely shouldn't be forced on any of them. But there are a lot of mutants who wouldn't actually mind being cured, and being a mutant has only been harmful for them. Like in Rogue's case, there's a scene from X-Men The Last Stand where she gets excited to hear that there's a cure, but then Storm says that there's nothing wrong with her, and she shouldn't want to be cured. They can't cure us. You wanna know why? Because there's nothing to cure. Nothing's wrong with you. Or any of us, for that matter. But Rogue has largely been isolated because of her powers. It's pretty understandable why she would be excited to hear about a cure. 
What's wrong, Cher? You know what happens when I touch somebody. You want to end up in the hospital? I can't help but feel like Storm's being pretty dismissive in this scene. Storm's powers don't really inconvenience her. In fact, they've largely been a net benefit. She's literally been worshipped as a goddess. Not to mention she passes as a normal human, and a beautiful one at that. Beast does mention this, but he does it in a way that's kind of playful, I guess. He says that she doesn't have to worry about shedding like he does, while also focusing on persecution from humans again. Who would want this cure? I mean, what kind of coward would take it just to fit in? Is it cowardice to save oneself from persecution? Not all of us can fit in so easily. You don't shed on the furniture. But there are some mutants who really suffer because of their powers and have it even worse than Rogue. Like this poor kid who killed everyone around him just because his powers activated. And then Wolverine has to kill him. It's like Logan says, powers are just the roll of the dice and not everyone's as lucky as Storm. It's kind of ironic that Storm's the one who loses her powers, especially since in the comics she was protecting Rogue. Storm has like the best powers in the franchise. She's an Omega level mutant who can do so many amazing things, but I'm still interested in seeing where they go with it and how close they'll stick with the comic. But that's only scratching the surface of all the problems I have with this allegory, like Kitty thinking she has the N-word past because she's a mutant. But it's something that you kind of just have to accept when it comes to X-Men. The allegory is a little questionable, but it is what it is. And that's very heavily played up in this show. But while I don't think the allegory is perfect, it's still got the job done of getting their message out. And it is still a good message. There's a lot to like about this show. I like the way the characters were handled and it really felt like they were a family. And I liked the dynamic between Jubilee and Roberto. It was pretty cute. I did feel like there were some things that were anachronistic, like Jubilee calling Magneto Xavier's ex-bestie. The show is stated to take place in 1997, and when you have things that are unapologetically 90s like the fashion sense, it's a bit jarring to hear this modern lingo, but the show has a lot to offer. Great action, great characters, actually being true to the original. I would definitely recommend it, but that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy X-Men 97? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to the members. Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Lucas Geis, J Draws, Blue Spirits, Meowsers, Sky, JinKZ, Philip, Stutania, Isaac Martinez, Garcia XV Legend, Data Dine Executive, Kitsune Fiora, Tobias Weller, Bandito Bane, Owen Wildish, Roderick Hare, and Mac B909. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also have a buy me coffee if you want to support us that way. If you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. And that part's free. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.